Welcome to HTX. Radio Master have been very busy recently. You'd have thought that the excellent, very popular Zorro they recently released would be enough. But no, there's more. They've just released another version of their massively popular TX16S transmitter called, well, the TX16S Mark II. Could they better the TX16S? Well, they very kindly sent me this and I've had a couple of weeks to play with it. So let's see. Hello and welcome to the Whirly Bloke channel. This is YouTube. Activity alarm. Shush. <laughs> you know what to do. Subscribe and hit the bell for more videos like this. Only a few years ago, the Tyrannis X9D was the transmitter of choice. And then came the whole jumper TX16 fiasco for a short while. But now, if you go to a quad race or a meetup, I guarantee the Radio Master TX16S will be the most popular radio. And for good reason. It's a fantastic radio at a sensible price, and there's a huge aftermarket range of accessories to pimp your transmitter. So, can the TX16S Mark II compete? I've been using this for a couple of weeks now, so let's see. Now, just like the Zorro, the Mark II 16S comes with Edge TX already installed. Mine came with version 2.6.0. And you get a choice of an Express LRS or a multi-protocol 4-in-1 internal RF module. And since the future seems to be, well, mostly ELRS and Edge TX, this is a sensible move by Radio Master. And there's an external RF module bay on the back so you're not locked in and can use, well, whatever you like, really. It's got new V4 Hall Effect gimbals and these use the same chipset as the excellent AGO1 gimbals. And I've got one here. And these have got improved centering and temperature stability. And there's a couple of different rear grips on the back here, these raised ones. And there's these flatter ones. And I know people complained about the original rubber grips because they easily got grubby and dirty. But these are sort of like not quite so soft, a little bit harder and very cleanable I suspect. Behind this grill there's dual speakers and the sound and volume, well, it's pretty good. And they've added an external headphone socket on the back and this minimises RF pickup on your headphones. And other things not so obvious are an improved charging circuit for the batteries that's got reverse polarity protection. And if you're used to using an original TX16S, this doesn't seem like a lot of difference, but they are a nice set of improvements. And this is a really good thing, because the original is excellent and making huge changes that just alienate people. Everything's in exactly the same place, which is great. And it might just be me, but these switches just seem to be a step up. There's more of a reassured click and feel to them. They just feel slightly better quality. Now you don't get any batteries with this, which I think is down to shipping restrictions. So you will need to allow for a couple of 18650 cells to put in the back here. That's pretty much the same for all radios these days. And they've improved this battery cover here. It's much easier to get on and get off. The old one was a bit difficult. Now I've been using this ELRS version for about a week and I haven't had any issues at all. It's been fantastic. The only thing that takes a bit of getting used to is the touchscreen that's now supported by Edge TX. You can just use all the buttons, the scroll wheel and the page back, page forward and that sort of thing. And you sort of forget that it's got a touchscreen. But the touch response, it's all pretty good. I haven't tried it in horrid weather yet, but I'll keep you posted. Now you can use all the buttons and the switches on your radio to navigate the menus, but the touchscreen does make some things really easy, but it's just easy to forget that you've got a touchscreen sometimes because most of us have been used to using the buttons. So getting to your radio settings, for example, how quick is that? It's really good. And 
go into your model settings. It's fantastically quick. And the touchscreen does seem to be pretty good. It really is fantastic. And I think, just like the Zorro, I've got a feeling this will be my daily driver when I need a larger radio with more functions and more knobs and switches. And also, just like the Zorro, having a full-size transmitter that's ready to go with Edge TX and ELRS installed is a fantastic move by Radio Master. Importantly, the price for the Mark II is exactly the same as the original TX16S at $200 or about £155. And hopefully they should be in the shops now. $200 is the price for the base model and there's a whole range of pimped up options for you to choose from. There's versions with the AG01 gimbals, there's the Mark II Max that's got red and black carbon finish, and there's an MCK and a Joshua Bardwell version. The AG01 version will cost you about another $130 or around £95, and a fully spec'd out MCK version with AG01 gimbals is going to cost you about $550. So there's versions to suit every pocket. But bear in mind, parts of China have been in lockdown for a while, so supplies and delivery may be delayed. The original version will be in the shops for a while until stocks have been used up, so there may be some great deals to be had. But I think it's pretty safe to assume the Mark II will be the future of the TX16S. And to be honest, you're getting a better radio for the same money anyway. As always, thanks for watching, and if you found that helpful, why not subscribe or maybe buy me a coffee to support the channel. There's all the usual social media links in the description, and I'll see you next time.